The United States is seeing a new surge of coronavirus infections across large parts of the country as well. That's according to the top U.S. infectious disease expert. He says the next two weeks will be critical to the country's ability to manage the new cases. His warning comes as political polarization competes for attention with public health advice. U.S. President Donald Trump was back on stage on Wednesday, eager to secure the support of voters in Arizona. No topic was taboo, even if it included racist slurs. It's got all different names. Wuhan. <laughs> Wuhan was catching on. Coronavirus, right? <laughs> Kung flu, yeah. COVID-19 has now infected more than 2.3 million people in the U.S. and killed more than 120,000. Trump said the numbers were the result of overtesting. We're testing so much, we're now up to 27.5 million tests. When you have all those tests, you have more cases. So the news conference said, they have more cases. We want to do testing. We want to do everything. But they use it to make us look bad. He was speaking as Arizona, Texas and Nevada set single-day records for new cases on Tuesday, while other states, including Louisiana and South Carolina, have also reported worrying surges. Senior health officials have confirmed widespread testing will continue. But to my knowledge, none of us have ever been told to slow down on testing. That just is a fact. In fact, we will be doing more testing, as you've heard from Admiral Girard, not only testing to specifically identify people in the identify, isolate and contact trace, but also much more surveillance. State governments have also begun to ramp up other precautions. Washington will soon join several states, including California, in requiring people to wear facial coverings in public as the economy reopens. But testing remains a primary defence against the virus, with US experts saying the current number of tests would need to be doubled to control the spread. Now let's bring in Christian Lindmeier. He's the spokesman for the World Health Organization in Geneva. A surge in cases in many US states. US President Donald Trump says it's because the US is testing so much. Is that true? Well, of course, when you test, you see more. That's good in itself. Uh, and if you test more, you would normally also find more. But the U.S. is uh, accounting for a quarter of the world's cases. So we have now just reached 9 million cases uh, worldwide and uh, short of 500,000 deaths. Um, and again, the U.S. is accounting for a quarter of these uh, in, in both cases. Um, testing is great. That's good. And uh, ramping up with surveillance and following up with the contacts and isolating uh, infected people quarantining uh, possible, possible contacts. That is a good thing. Um, and it's, it's good that uh, the administration now does all this in, in a way more accelerated way than what we have seen before. And uh, if we see then more cases, that's to be expected. But of course, the, the major goal here is to find the cases mm. and to fight it. Because right now, they are still leading the world in cases, uh, also compared with other huge countries uh, with, with a lot, way larger populations. So um, let's yeah. move this ahead, yes. The, uh, Christian, as we saw, Donald Trump is holding large campaign events in Moscow uh, today. There's a huge, or was a huge parade, and Europeans are looking forward to uh, the summer vacation season. How concerned is the WHO that countries are returning to normal activities? But there's a, there's a big, uh, I wouldn't really call it, call it gamble, but like a trade-off here. We need to go back to some sort of normality in order also to have the physical and the mental stability. Whether it be sports events, vacations, weekends out, evenings out, mingling, that's all important for us as human beings. But at the same time, it's very important to do this as safe as possible. As safe as, as safe as possible. It shouldn't be life or sanity versus safety. It should be all together. Um, the same for the economy. It should be livelihoods and lives. Um, so let's do this all in a safe way. And I've been out in, in Germany actually just on this weekend. And it was very interesting to see people are wearing masks all over the places. Not everybody does, but it's very, very much uh, enforced. And that's a, that's a good thing. So as long as you respect the rules, meaning where you cannot avoid physical contact, wear your mask and where it's recommended, of course. And of course, do the hand hygiene whenever you've been around people and have been touching items. That's an important thing. And if you do this, um, then you're safe in the, in the national context. 
Travel, of course, is another big question which everybody has on their mind right now. But that has to be a risk evaluation of every individual country with a destination to go to. Some destinations might will be safer than others. And that, again, depends also on the way the cases are treated. How are border checks being done or, or controls in, in health terms? How do hotels act? How do beaches uh, control or not control? How do restaurants behave? That's, that's a huge mm. uh, pack of questions. And there cannot be one answer to it. It has to be an individual risk assessment, which, of course, the national and the local authorities have to do. Talking about uh, individuals, yesterday a judge in Brazil ordered President Jair Bolsonaro to start wearing a mask in public. Does the coronavirus show it the difficulty when public health becomes politicized? Very much so. And I think we've seen uh, in, the, in the recent past, in the re recent months, that especially countries which have a a more po um, politicized and polarized society uh, have not been doing so great in the fight against coronavirus. Countries which are much more stable as a society, and that doesn't have to be a political unity. There can be discrepancies on a political level as would be normal in a democracy. But when countries are polarized and politicized, they have been doing not so well. Um, mm. So the virus is pointing out weaknesses in societies. Um, also on the political level. And that's an interesting, uh, interesting discovery to make. Christian Lindmeier from the World Health Organization in Geneva. Thank you. Health officials in the German state of North Rhine-Westphalia are conducting mass coronavirus testing after officials reimposed lockdown measures on more than 640,000 people. Residents of the Gütersloh and Warendorf districts in the state of North Rhine-Westphalia face severe restrictions on their movements. Authorities took the lockdown decisions after a major spike in virus infections at a meat processing plant in that region. Some 1,000 workers of the Tönnies slaughterhouse have tested positive for COVID-19. Well, our reporter Amir Asif is outside a coronavirus testing center in Gütersloh, which is in uh, that area. So, I mean, what's the situation uh, like there? Right. The building behind me is actually a community college, but school is not in session. They've turned this into a makeshift coronavirus testing center. The authorities announced that everybody in Gütersloh can get tested for free, but this is the only center they provided. And as you can see, a massive line has formed here. It starts around the corner several hundred meters and then continues down the street for another several hundred meters. Countless people in line can't even see the end from where I'm standing. Uh, we talked to several families. We talked to one family who was at the beginning of the line. They said they came out here at 7 in the morning and there was already several hundred people standing there. They had heard the announcement uh, that they could get tested for free, so they came out here as early as possible. Um, and they're still worried that they're not going to get to the end of the line. And as for people who are all the way at the back, the question really remains, is there enough capacity here to test uh, up to 200,000 people who live in this district? Wow. I mean, this is a localized outbreak, but it's captured the whole country's attention. How are people reacting elsewhere? Well, that's exactly why so many people want to get tested, because several German states have uh, basically closed their borders to vacationers from this district. Now, summer vacation begins next week. A lot of people in line here want to go on holiday. And uh, Bavaria, for example, and Schleswig-Holstein, um, Mecklenburg, West Pomerania have all said that visitors from this district are not welcome. In some areas, though, if you provide a negative coronavirus test, then you can stay at hotels, for example, in the area. Austria is also among one of the countries that has banned vacationers from uh, uh, Gütersloh district and Warendorf districts. So a lot of people standing in line here want to get their negative tests so that uh, tomorrow, Saturday, um, next week, they can go on their vacations. I understand there's also a similar, if smaller, outbreak underway at a poultry plant uh, in the northwest of Germany. Uh, tell us more about that, Amir. That's right. In a, a Wildeshausen, that's northwest of here, a separate outbreak at a poultry plant has, in, 
Uh, 23 people have tested positive, but that's only out of 50 people who are tested. So that plant is going to test uh, all of its 1,100 workers. But this really just brings uh, slaughterhouses into the spotlight. German authorities have known about the dangers for a while. They've passed a law uh, to ban outsourcing of labor so that they can bring this more under control, um, have a little bit of more insight into how workers are being treated there. Uh, but there's other voices demanding that uh, some action be, be is taken now. Now, this poultry plant, even though they have positive cases, they've isolated them and they're continuing work. But some people are demanding that this really uh, comes under focus here, that somebody does something about the spreading of viruses at slaughterhouses so that a situation like this can be avoided. DW's Amir Esif in Gütersloh. Thank you. Well, here are some other developments in the coronavirus pandemic. Deaths in Latin America and the Caribbean have now exceeded 100,000. Australia has recorded its first virus-related fatality in a month after an 80-year-old man died in the state of Victoria. The EU may ban travelers from the US, Brazil and Russia when it reopens its external borders, according to a report in the New York Times. And Tokyo says it expects a large number of new cases after a virus cluster was discovered in an office building there.